doing a score, but already they've shown they can get in behind this Honduras defense. It's very experienced, but it, it looks a little portly, to say the least. Eduardo Dolmo lays it back for Marco and Arriba. And the Hondurans forced a retreat. Scott Munson getting trapped. Quickly played forward for Dolmo. Frank Yallop there to mark him. Dolmo. One on one with Yelmut. He'll lay it back for Anariba. Across the top of the box looking for Yearwood. Jamie Lowry gets a foot in, and here come the Canadians, and it's led by Carl Valentine. Dale Mitchell. John Catliff is brought down, and the foul outside the box says Mr. Arturo Angeles. Looked like a good tackle by Juan Ramon Castro on Catliff, but this is a very dangerous situation. We've seen Dale Mitchell score oh, from here ever. so often. Decoy run over the ball, Dale Mitchell curl it inside the near post. Now I wonder if they get the Canadian Soccer League in Honduras. If they do, then they've seen this set play. Here it's Mitchell, and off the wall, and over the net, and it'll go as a corner. But that's the patented play. The intent was there. Catliff ran over the ball as the dummy. Usually it's Mobilio, but Mobilio didn't make the trip simply because the 86ers have already provided two members of the side to this international team. Cleared away by Honduras. Offside. Dale Mitchell caught offside as Catliff had played it through, and Mitchell a pace. A little slow to get out. Look at the size of Raul Martinez. Giant of a man at center back for Honduras. They list him only at six feet, but he looks much bigger than that because he, he dwarfed Dale Mitchell. Canada's next game will be on Sunday against Mexico, and then they'll finish their round-robin competition in Group A against Jamaica. That game will be on Wednesday. Chip through, and that's the first shot on goal by the Hondurans, and no problem for Craig Forrest, who guarded the near post. Ian Bridge. Frank Yellow. Carl Valentine and back as the Canadians really slowing it down. Ten minutes into this first half of play. And then so referee Arturo Angeles showing that he will not allow the cleats to show on a tackle. Catliff going in for the ball about knee high, blown down right away. Martinez with the free kick for Honduras. Mark Watson won the ball in the air. Limniatis gets a foot in. Limniatis again at midfield. Getting crossed up just a little bit with John Catliff. Valentine will go wide to the left. 
for Miller. Now it's Dale Mitchell. Lindy Addis makes the run through the right. Lowry is in the middle as well. They look for Catliff, and Catliff is offside. Should be quite a battle this evening between Raul Martinez and John Catliff. Two big men. Incidentally, Raul Martinez born in 1953. If my maths are correct, that makes him 38 years old. It also was the year I started playing, 1953. How time <laughs> flies. Frank Yellow quickly takes the throw in. And Catliff quickly surrounded. So the Hondurans have done their homework as well, Graham. They know that Catliff is the danger man. An encouraging start for Canada, though. They've tried to take the game to Honduras and so far have been in charge in midfield and have looked very solid at the back. Bridge. Oh, Mitchell goes to the far post looking for Munson. Now this is Jamie Lowry. Jamie Lowry who hasn't seen much action this year for the Vancouver 86ers, but getting the start here for Tony Waiters in Canada. Cut back in. Carl Valentine, Luis Calix takes it away from the Canadian World Cup veteran of 1986, but Ian Bridge pinching up will bring it right back for Canada. Lays it off for Limniitis. And now the break for Eduardo Bennett. Bennett, and he misses the near side. We play 12 minutes. It's still scoreless, Canada and Honduras. What more can you say? There? It's a lot of hard work there and determination. And it paid off with my coach there, Ed and Blake there. They're the ones that got me here. So I uh, fell out thanks to that. That was the, the 200. Uh, came in first for that one. Could be him or him. One of the three could be coming in first and was... I feel maybe disappointed, but uh, at least I'm here. Anyways, uh, you know, I got it this far here. You know, what more could I add? Every day, they're playing their hearts out. Be a part of it. Welcome back. Vic Rotor along with Graham Leggett. Still scoreless, Canada and Honduras. Canada a little fortunate there. Eduardo Bennett catching Frank Yellup as the last man back. Ian Bridge venturing forward, getting caught upfield. Canada cannot afford to get caught one-on-one -on -one against these forwards. They're very skillful, very sharp. And the finish by Bennett, a bit of a let-off for Canada, I must say. Ian Bridge at midfield for Canada. Now he'll go wide to the left, looking for a breaking Mitchell. And it'll run over the end line and keeper's ball. a notion of going back to his keeper Cruz but I think he's trying to draw the Canadian forwards forward get them coming stretch them out as soon as Canada loses the ball they're getting back picking the man up Martinez is saying look if you want it from us come forward and get it right now the strikers for Canada are not biting they're picking the man up Munson got caught a little earlier now here's a chance oh good save by Forrest as it appeared that Bennett had gotten through for Honduras, he found the seam. They're very sharp off the mark, but full marks to Craig Forrest, who came off his line beautifully. The first real chance of this game from the LA Coliseum. Hooked in front, looking for Eduardo, hooked back and headed away by Canada. And now Valentine, out of desperation, will clear it to midfield. And Watson does well as Forrest came out to make the challenge on Dolmo. As you look at the general manager for the Canadian team, Les Wilson. Les looking a little concerned, and so he, he made 
two chances in the last 30 seconds, both for Eugenio Dolmo. And good covering by Mark Watson saved the second one. Great goalkeeper by Craig Forrest saved the day on the first. Antonio Zapata with the throw in for Honduras as the Canadians under all kinds of pressure. Uh -oh. Eduardo Forrest is there again. Eduardo Bennett turned and got the shot away trying to tuck it inside the near post. Little flick on runs beautifully for Bennett. He turns, hits it, but Craig Forrest parries it and gathers it before Dolmo can pick up the rebound. Just when we said Canada had had an encouraging start, this Honduran side show their mettle by creating two, three very, very good scoring chances. Dale Mitchell will lay it back, and then the opportunity to get it across doesn't work. Fifteen minutes have been played here in the first half. It's still scoreless, Canada and Honduras. <laughs> Coca-Cola wants to take you out to the ballpark. We've got instant win ticket packages to the Major League Baseball All-Star Game at Skydome July 9th. The tickets to regular season Blue Jay games. You could also win caps, jerseys, and jackets, as well as bonus bottles of Coca-Cola Classic. To enter the Coca-Cola Classic Baseball Caps Contest, buy a 500 or 750 milliliter bottle of any Coca-Cola product and check under the cap. You could be a winner with Coca-Cola Classic. Details at participating stores. The best opportunities, Graham, have belonged to Honduras after a, a seemingly good start for Canada. They're very sharp. The Honduran forwards are very quick off the mark. We've already seen Domo get behind the red shirt three times. Really, one-on-one, -on -one, Canada cannot afford to leave the defenders in that situation. Jamie Lowry looked to create a give-and-go that didn't work for Canada. What an interesting story. Jamie Lowry, Vancouver 86ers, cannot win his place in the Vancouver 86ers side right now, but starts for Tony Waiters in Canada against Honduras. Just shows how highly he's held by Tony Waiters. Well, really he works in midfield. Well, exactly. We talked about that earlier, and you suggested that, in fact, that's the reason. It's because he knows he's going to get an honest day's work, as it were, from a Jamie Lowry. That's the kind of player he is. And in a temperature like this against a side like Honduras, you need some workers in midfield to do that extra running, that extra chasing, that extra tackling. And Jamie Lowry's your man. Here's an opportunity for Munson from the Kitchener Kickers looking to hit Catliff, and it's headed away by Yearwood. Juan Espinosa to midfield. Eduardo Bennett couldn't get away. Partially cloudy in Los Angeles at game time. Temperature of about 76 degrees. Perfect. Only perfect. Interesting to see Martinez directing traffic back there, the big center back. And saying to Ana Riba, let's go back to Wilmer Cruz, and then we'll start it all over again. Gilberto Yearwood is on the left. Martinez has a look, but once again, as you suggest, trying to draw the Canadian forward. In this case, Munson in, but Munson wouldn't bite. Oh, 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 here's a chance. Oh, my. As Craig Forrest got caught coming out, maybe didn't know what he wanted to grab it or punch it away. He knew he was right on the line. Watch this, this is a difficult decision. He actually could have waited a second and caught it inside the box, but he decided to head it, misheaded it completely, but luckily for Canada, the Honduras finishing is not up to the build-up. Dale Mitchell. And the pass back from Scott Munson goes into touch throw in for Honduras. Antonio Zapata.
Mark Watson for Ian Bridge. Frank Yellup into the middle for John Limniatis. Go wide left. Mark Watson from the Hamilton Steelers will play it to the North York Rockets. Ian Bridge in back as Eduardo Bennett is up and pressing for Honduras. Catliff. Dale Mitchell will play it in over the head of Scott Munson and no problem for Vilmer Cruz. Eduardo Dolmo, who had one of the best chances for Honduras so far, as we play 20 minutes. Jamie Lowry, Carl Valentine, and he's brought down by number two, Gilberto Yearwood. And the foul is on the Honduran player, and it'll be free kick for Canada. Well, he goes over the top of the ball a little bit here, follows through against Carl Valentine, and Referee Angles blew it round right away. The experience of Yearwood knew he wasn't going to win that tackle. Decided to have a little bit of a bite at the red shirt. Oh, what a clear. Headed away neatly. Oh, Limniatis. Limniatis with the chance, but Cruz is right there. Cruz looks so calm and collected. He's got long pants on in this LA heat. And he looks as if he's almost bored. On the right wing, making the break. Zapata couldn't get around the Canadian defender. And suddenly the game has started to open up just a little bit. 21 minutes into the first half. And young Mark Watson there, one of our Olympic squad, showing how he's matured. How encouraging it must be for Tony Waiters to see both Watson and Munson playing in the first team, so to speak. Zapata plays it forward, looking for Eduardo Bennett. And then Jamie Lowry is brought down. It looked like it was Espinosa on the tackle. Just left his foot in once again. They don't like to see the studs come up, the players from Honduras, so they just leave their leg in a little bit late. The 30-year-old Jamie Lowry. 17 international caps for Canada, including the 86 World Cup in Mexico. Marco Anariba to midfield for Honduras. Martinez gives it away. Lowry, the left side. Mitchell, give and go. Catliff. Oh, and he gave it right back. Ooh. Now the crowd starts to come alive at the Coliseum as Calix can't get it by. Biggie and Bridge, the starting fullback. Dale Mitchell. Limniatis. Valentine. Ian Bridge. Catliff shields it well. Colin Miller with the cross in the box and over the head of Catliff. And back again is Raul Martinez for Honduras. That was a nice ball by Colin Miller right on the penalty spot, but it really is going to be tough trying to win the ball in the air against Raul Martinez. Maybe 38 years old, but boy, his timing is perfect and he's a big, big man. Castro will play it back for Cruz and as they've done so often already in this first half they'll give it to Raul Martinez and he'll start them up Ah, this time he drew in Catliff saw the opening and took it himself up the middle played forward for Eduardo Bennett Ian Bridge to mark him now one on one plays it off for Calix Calix dances away from Catliff. 
But the referee, Mr. Angeles, didn't allow the advantage, and the foul is on Cutler. And the free kick is being held up while Martinez, who else, trots his way to the far post. If they can swing it over to him, look out. Oh. <laughs> And Raul Martinez will not enjoy that. He plods all the way along to the far post, and then they try a shot from all the 35 yards that Craig Forrest has to come out and pick up. Not very good tactics. 26-year-old Colin Miller will bring it back for Canada. For Mark Watson. Limniatus at midfield for Canada. To the right wing for Frank Yallop, who has moved up from his right fullback spot. The return pass to Limniatus doesn't work. Bridge, Yallop, back to Bridge. Wide to the left, looking for Scott Munson. Jamie Lowry, Limniatus. Limniatus chips it, far post, Munson goes up. We play 25 minutes of this first half. It's still scoreless. Canada and Honduras, the Gold Cup from Los Angeles. Number one draft choice. Sport isn't greed. What is sport you, isn't on? arrogance. Do your job. Sport isn't You're big class. business. Sport isn't gimmicks. A third player was a sport isn't life and death. It's time to get back to what is essential. Welcome back. Vic Rotor along with Graham Leggett. Glad that you're with us. Canada against Honduras in game one of the Gold Cup from Los Angeles. And Martinez playing a little cat and mouse game with John Catlett. Just daring him to come forward and challenge, and Catliff not biting at all. Scott Munson drops it back. Played in for Mitchell. Jamie Lowry can't control as Gilberto Yearwood was right there in his face. They'll come wide to the left looking for Dolmo. Now lay it back for Anariba. Nicely set up to the left side. This is Marco Anariba. Yearwood, Anariba, cross the top of the box. Jamie Lowry is there. And then just gives it right back to Anariba. Espinosa plays it through in the offside flag. Good play there by Frank Yallop, the right back for Canada, wearing number two. So he was the last man back, just took a step forward as the ball was played, left two white shirts in an offside position. John Limniatus through midfield and gives it away. Here's a through ball. An opportunity now for Honduras. Forrest is out. And he's given a penalty kick, and he could well card Forrest for this new rule. Last man back. It's an automatic red card, and now Canada really is in trouble because Carlo Marini, the backup goalkeeper, will have to come on. An innocent-looking tackle by Craig Forrest. But the new FIFA rule is if you are the last man back and you prevent the breakaway by committing a foul, then it's an automatic red card. You have a look at this. Craig Forrest goes for the ball, leaves his hands in there, pulls him down. Referee right on the spot made the correct decision on the FIFA's new rule. Craig Forrest is red carded and is sent off. Canada will play with 10 men. 
for the rest of the game. They will have to make a substitute now and bring somebody off to bring on Carlo Marini, the substitute goalkeeper. Forrest can take no part in the game from now on. And there you see the Canadian head coach, Tony Waiters, the 54-year-old who guided Canada to the World Cup in 1986. Obviously very concerned because Forrest is the veteran and the second keeper, the reserve keeper, is 18-year-old Carlo Marini. Somebody I think they didn't expect to put into the lineup. Another look. Well, the whole thing started because Carlos Ortiz, the far side linesman, did not give offside on the through ball. But this is a good run. Clever play by Bennett to take it past Forrest. Forrest definitely brought him down, and the rule states he has to go. The Canadians don't like it, but that's FIFA's new rule. Had Colin Miller or Mark Watson pulled them down on the breakaway, they would have been red carded. So I still think on the initial through ball that Bennett was a good yard offside. But the flag stayed down and Canada down to 10 men and really are up against it now. General Manager Les Wilson making notes in his book. And you can see Tony Waiters out. He wants to have a little word with the referee Arturo Angeles of the United States won't do any good Tony's just I dare say asking if he can make a substitute before the penalty is taken because one outfield player will have to come off so that the goalkeeper can go on unless he wants to play Catliff or Dale Mitchell who have had some experience in goal just for the penalty kick and then give him time to think but right now this is an awkward situation and referee Angeles as the ball ready to put on the penalty spot for Honduras. And there you see the time. We've just played about 31 minutes of this first half. Still no score, but it's obviously time to be added on for this first half. And you can see, there he is, the 18-year-old Carlo Marini, 6'3", from Vancouver, B.C. This is his first appearance with the national team. He plays in Italy with Apria in the Italian fifth division in their national league and so you can see Tony having a little bit of a smile with him. Yes he is, he's trying to relax the youngster, he's saying hey what a good time to go in Carlo just in time to save a penalty kick No, and Tony, I think Tony may well put somebody in goal just for the penalty kick and then put Marini in after the penalty kick but then again, knowing Tony, <laughs> who knows what he's going to do. What a very difficult situation, Graham. I mean, they've lost your number one keeper. Now they've got to play the rest of the game. One man short against the side, a Honduran side, which has really dominated Canada in past games. There you see Derek Posse, the assistant coach of this Canadian national side. And now the substitution is being allowed. Well, Marini's in goal. Now we have to wait to see who came off because one outfield player has definitely got to come off so that young Carlo Marini can take his place between the sticks. What a nice time to go in. You can't really lose in this situation because you expect him to score a penalty. If he were to save this, oh, what a start for the youngster. What a start and what a lift it would be for... Canada. It looks as if it will be number 19, Eduardo Bennett, to take this penalty kick. He was pulled down by Craig Forrest. Mr. Angeles trying to get the game back. Uh, <laughs> and back young, underway, but it's taken some time. Young Carlo Marini playing mind games as he wanders around Bennett and ambles back into the center of the goal. You got to look at the head coach of the Honduran team, that is Flavio Ortega, Brazilian by birth, but has coached in Honduras for a number of years, winning two national Honduran championships in 1988 and 1999. Beautiful. And it's 1-0 for Honduras on the penalty kick by Eduardo Bennett. And 
Saltando por la Selección Nacional de Honduras, el número 19. Have a look at this. This is a clinic on how to take a penalty kick. Your mind's made up. Just stroke it inside the post. No chance at all for young Carlo Marini. From another angle, this is what the goalkeeper sees. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That goal by Eduardo Bennett comes in the 33rd minute. Here again a chance for Honduran as Dolmo seemed to get around Ian Bridge, but this time the play is blown dead. Good challenge here by Ian Bridge, but not necessary at all as number 18 Zapata put his hand up. South Americans, Central Americans, pretty good at that little move. <laughs> You're not going to talk about Maradona again? No, I'm not. Okay. I promise, folks, I'm not going to talk about Maradona again. The goal scorer, Bennett, with Ian Bridge to mark him for Canada. Lovely job by Bennett, gets it across. Oh, my. Dolmo got away from the Canadian defender and nearly tucked it in the far post. Well, he should really have scored. It was a great cross. He rose beautifully, had the whole net to pick as the youngster Marini stayed on his line, and he just whipped in it almost trouble in that situation when you try to pick the corners nine times out of ten you're headed past the far post he'd have been much better just getting it on target and Carlo Marini would have had little chance Canada under all kinds of pressure now as they play with just ten men and Honduras using the extra man very well to pull the Canadian defense wide they line up in the middle, then they pull wide for the diagonal ball, and they're doing it very well. Limniatis. Carl Valentine. Limniatis. And pulled down, and the foul will be on the Honduran player, Maurizio Funes. Yalop. Looking for Dale Mitchell. And what kind of things will the Canadians have to do now to play with 10? What kind of changes will Tony Waiters have to make? I don't think he'll make all that many changes. At times it's awkward to play against 10 men because the, the remaining players fill in so well. You tend to get a little complacent at times when you're 11 against 10 and it can come back to haunt you. Martinez plays it wide on the right for Zapata for Funes, and they'll go right back again to Martinez. Zapata. Castro chips it into the area. Jamie Lowry is there, hooked in front and then headed away neatly. Valentine down the left side and the foul will be on the Hondurans Limniatis Valentine and back as the Canadians seem to be a little bit more deliberate now in their build up Graham they don't have much option but playing with two men up front now they have to work the ball through midfield so that there's enough red shirts up to support they started off with three front runners now they've only got two front runners young Scott Munson being the player that came off so that Carlo Marini could take Craig Forrest's place in goal Valentine will take this corner headed away now, Valentine will let it go over the end line and take it again. 
Canada trailing 1-0. Honduras, the goal by Eduardo Bennett at 33 minutes on a penalty kick. Ian Bridge has moved up. Here's a chance. Oh, look who was right there. Catliff, and so was Vilma Cruz. Vilma Cruz has made it look all so easy. His positional sense is such that a little flick like that, and he's standing waiting on it. He's been waiting on two, three shots so far this evening. Once again, Bennett looking to break through, but the play whistled. This is a nice little flick on by Catliff. He thinks he's got it in the goal, but look at the goalkeeper. Catliff perhaps better advised there to flick it onto the far post where Limniatis was making a run, but easy for us to see here. It's tough for him to see down there. Goalkeeper really is cool, calm, and collected, isn't he? <laughs> Zapata now seems to have moved from the left-back position where he started over to right-back. I think that's because Dale Mitchell has been operating mostly on the left wing, and Zapata has gone over to pick him up. Here's an opportunity now for Honduras as Yearwood tries to break through. Yes! And it's 2-0 Honduras. Espinosa tried his luck from about 25 yards out. Carlo Marini was just inches short as he got a fingertip to it but couldn't deflect it past the post. Have another look. Nice effort by Espinosa. The goalkeeper seems to have it, just lacks a little height to get to it. But it's 2 to nil for Honduras. And I'm quite positive that Craig Forrest, who is at least six inches taller, and Carlo Marini would have saved that ball. But a little too late to say that. Craig Forrest now in the shower, having been sent off for a, what used to be called a professional foul. The goal by Juan Espinosa comes in the 40th minute of this first half. Honduras leading 2 nothing over Canada. Catliff, edge of the area. Cuts it in front and cleared away by Marco Anariba. Limniatis, Catliff has the Canadians now. Playing one man short, trailing by two, and they'll have to open it up and Boy, this could be a flood. Well, I don't know about flood, but this is the second goal once again. The goalkeeper does really well to try and push it past the post, but just lack the inches to get enough force behind his push. Well, Carlo Marini, they list him at six foot three inches and Craig Forrest at six foot five. And you're right, maybe those two inches could have been or may have been the difference. Espinosa and Arriba, and he'll play it all the way back for Cruz. And now we can expect to see Honduras push it around with a two goal lead. They love to put the work on the ball. Just clip it to the white shirt, wait a little minute till somebody makes a run, and clip it to another one. Jamie Lowry looking into the middle for Catliff, but big Raul Martinez was there for Honduras. Carl Valentine hustles over, keeps it in play. And Hariba, midfield. Limniatis to Mark Kev. Nani Arriba gives it away as Lowry will take it for Canada. Limney Addis at midfield. Can't control, and then the Hondurans will take it again. Calix. Wide right for Espinosa. Little through ball. Watson is there. Oh, they get caught up, and 
Lack of communication, I think, right there between Watson and the keeper, Marini. Not sure whether one would come out or one would play it back. Well, lack of communication is the right phrase. Goalkeeper should have come for it. Bad pass back by Colin Miller. And once again, the Canadians breathe a sigh of relief. It could well have been 3-0. You cannot afford that kind of mistake at any time, least of all when you're down 2-0. Limniatis. Looking for Mitchell, and it didn't get there. Ian Bridge. The pass for Catliff is cut off. And once again, there he is, Raul Martinez. The 38-year-old settling them down. As you look at Flavio Ortega, who coaches for Real España and has won two championships in the Honduran National League in 1988 and 1990. And according to our watch, Graham, we're into a time added on now. And referee Arturo Angeles there telling the white shirts and the blue shirt of Cruz to get on with it. He doesn't want this fiddling around. As you can see we're well into injury time, but there was two, three minutes ran over when Craig Forrest was given the red card. By the time they made the substitute, I would reckon there has to be about five minutes overtime on this first half. Ian Bridge for Mark Watson. Colin Miller is wide in the left, and that's where the ball goes. Colin Miller, who is a player coach for Hamilton Academical in the first division in Scotland. Saw some time with the Hamilton Steelers for two seasons. Luis Calix plays it forward. Doesn't get anywhere. Carl Valentine plays it off for Lowry. Miller looking for Dale Mitchell and kicked out of play by Honduras. 2 nothing. Goals at 33 and 44 minutes and Honduras lead 2 nothing. Top of the area again looking for Catliff. Now, and Limniatis guilty of handball, quickly taken by Honduras. So they play it forward, looking for Bennett. Mark Watson to mark him, Bennett. Comes wide right, this is Luis Calix. Bennett, Bridge, here's a chance, yes! And it's three nothing Honduras. Luis Calix on the give and go. And a well-worked goal for Honduras gives them that three-goal edge. Beautiful play by Calix, shielded well by Dolmo. Calix follows up to take the return ball and gives Marini no chance as he tucks it inside the far post. Beautiful one-two, nice vision, good finish. This is Calix with the original ball. Now watch him go for the return, but Dolmo does ever so well to keep Bridge off it. Clips it into the path of Calix. Nice finish. Once again, the youngster looked a little slow getting down for that one. Luis Calix scores in extra time at 45 minutes, and it is 3-0 Honduras. Miller lays it back. Carl Valentine. Top of the area. Oh, there was again Raul Martinez with the sliding tackle for Honduras. Canada.
Florida suffering a bit of a black eye in this game, trailing 3-0. Well, I don't know what Tony Waiters would have said to his team at halftime, but 3-0 down. All he can say is, look, let's try and get the next goal. Let's see what we can salvage from this game. It's a round robin. We're not out of it. Let's take a positive attitude and show these people at the Coliseum in LA that we can play it. They started off so well, uh, looked very promising, and then the Hondurans just sucked it to them. Honduras come wide to the right for Antonio Zapata. Espinosa and Zapata back again. Jamie Lowry with Espinosa there to mark him. And they'll go into the middle for Carl Valentine. Valentine across midfield. Limniatis has moved wide left. We should point out as well that Craig Forrest with that red card will not be able to play in the next game and that will be of course on Sunday against Jamaica and so we will see Carlo Marini again in net for Canada. Valentine. Limniatis. Colin Miller. Lowry. Mark Watson. Ian Bridges is on his right. They go through the middle for Valentine. Colin Miller makes the run from his left fullback spot, crosses it for the far post, but no problem for the keeper Wilmer Cruz of Honduras. Espinosa. And Arriba. Raul Martinez. Zapata. Across midfield. Eduardo Bennett calls for it and over his head as well as Eduardo Dolmo. And Frank Yollop will keep it in play for Canada. Honduras. Getting a goal at 33 minutes on a penalty kick by Eduardo Bennett. And then goals at 40 minutes by Juan Espinosa. And then at 45 minutes by Luis Calix to pick up the 3-0 lead at halftime. Yearwood to Castro and to Martinez. Once again, referee Angeles comes forward to tell the goalkeeper and the big central defender, look, it's not illegal, but uh, I'd rather you didn't waste time like that. Let's get on with the game. The spectators here who paid a lot of money to see it. Ooh, and Yallop took a beauty there right on the side of the head. Frank Yallop, Ipswich Town defender, took the full force of that on the side of the head. It looked like it was Zapata who tried to get the cross in. The 27-year-old who has spent 10 years with Ipswich Town, originally signed as a youngster by Bobby Robson. And the Canadian trainer, Greg Bay, is out to have a look at Frank Yallop, who was born in Watford, but makes his off-season home in Coquitlam, BC. I was gonna say that, but I couldn't say Coquitlam. <laughs> this is another look at the incident. Full force of the blow. Yallop didn't chicken out, stuck his head right in the path of it. You'll maybe think twice about it the second time. Good defender, very experienced back there. I'm sure able to help young Mark Watson a great deal. Frank 
Gallup seeing his first international experience in the Corona Cup that we uh, televised last year. The tournament featuring Mexico and Canada and the United States. Canada winning that tournament. That was Mexico's first appearance after serving their two-year suspension for using overaged players at a minor level. Be interesting to see how they play in this tournament, Mexico, because I know they have set the hearts on winning the one hey, remaining CONCACAF spot for the World Cup that will be held, of course, in the United States. And even now, after not being seen for a couple of years, Mexico would have to be the, the favorite to earn that spot. The United States will be, of course, the host country and gain automatic entry. Marco Arriba gets it across. Yes, Eduardo Dolmo. And it's 4 nothing Honduras. And it looked so easy, you almost had to think that the linesman had put his flag up or the referee had blown his whistle because the red shirts just stood and watched Dolmo knock in the goal. Great run by Anariba. Cuts it across beautifully. There's a nice finish. No chance at all for Carlo Marini. The youngster's really not having much chance with these goals at all, but this is a beautiful cross by Anariba. Watch him curve it with the inside of his left foot that bends it past the defender and brings it right into the path of Eugenio Dolmo. Four to nil. And really, they've created some very, very good opportunities, and they've capitalized on most of them. The goal by Dolmo at the 48th minute of play. Canada again playing with only 10 men and being caught. And here come the Hondurans looking for more. It is Dolmo laying it off. Again cut across by Anariba. As it looks as if the, the Hondurans have Flip-flop there, starting fullback. San Arriba moving to the left. <laughs> Domo looks one happy camper, doesn't he? Does a little dance. I tell you what, if you're down 4-0, you never do that. If you're up 4-0, yeah. every time. Looks good. Good player. Very sharp off the mark. Very confident. Played a big part in that uh, goal by Calix. That given goal with Calix that Doma took part in for the third goal was brilliant. Carl Valentine for Ian Bridge. There's times you look at this Honduras side, they look slow, they look clumsy. About five of them look overweight. <laughs> and you think there's no way they can be up 4-0. And yet all of a sudden they turn on and they push it around beautifully. They move into space, they overlap. Very deceptive side. Limniatis for Dale Mitchell. Plays it through for Lowry. Limniatis. Colin Miller has moved up from his left fullback spot. Zapata is there. And did it go off Zapata? No. Nope. No, it didn't. It'll be keeper's ball. There's Colin Miller, the 26-year-old. Has 11 international caps for Canada, has seen action in the old NASL with Toronto and in the Canadian Soccer League with Hamilton. Ian Bridge to midfield. Miller. Limniatis. Plays for Aris in Greece for Bridge. Right foots it forward, doesn't get through. Now look at this, Gray, and the Canadians being caught, and out comes Marini. Nothing to really waste here for Canada. They may as well push everybody forward. The trouble is when they push everybody forward, number 19, Bennett, is left one-on-one -on -one with uh, young Mark Watson, and Bennett gives him a little nudge every time. Referee was going to blow a foul there, decided it was the advantage because Marini had the ball in his hand, but young Mark Watson has been fouled every time by Bennett and it's never been called yet. 
Limniatis tries to slide it through for Lowry, and Lowry does well to pick it up. Back for Limniatis. Carl Valentine goes to the far post looking for Mitchell. And cleared away by Gilberto Yearwood. Okay. Eduardo Dolmo, who scored the fourth goal for Honduras, slows up the pace and lays it back. Little give and go with Calix again. Oh, Ian Bridge. Through for Calix. We've played eight minutes of this second half, and it is all Honduras. They lead Canada 4-0, the Gold Cup from Los Angeles. Wake up, hey Canada, wake up. Today's on McCain Day. What's the secret of McCain's richer tasting juice? More oranges. McCain concentrates the juice of more oranges into every can. More than Minute Maid, more than Old South. So you have a special reason to buy McCain. You bet I do. It's like an extra squeeze of juice in every glass. So compared to Minute Maid and Old South, you have an extra reason to drink McCain. You bet I do. Wake up to McCain. Welcome back to game one of the 1991 Gold Cup tournament from Los Angeles. Vic Roto along with Graham Leggett and Honduras in control leading 4-0. Canada forced to play with only 10 men since about the 30 minute mark of the first half when goalkeeper Craig Forrest was red carded for pulling down Eduardo Bennett on a breakaway and from there it has been all as we say Honduras and they lead 4-0 Catliff can he keep it in play and does well Castro there to mark. They'll lay it off. Here's Miller going for the far oh, post. Great try. Beautiful one-two with Valentine. Tried to bend it just inside the far post. It didn't bend enough. And the Hondurans warming up a substitute. Watch this play by Dale Mitchell as he takes the return ball and tries to curve it underneath the crossbar at the far post. Cruz looks as if he knew it was going wide all the way, but from a different angle, this was not a bad effort. Doesn't bend enough and goes past the far post. Dale Mitchell, the senior statesman of this Canadian team, he has 33 caps, and he is the leading goal scorer with 13 international goals for Canada. to suggest it would be nice for the Canadians to get at least one here salvage a little something confidence if anything going into game two against Jamaica and the foul given there against John Catliff as he went in a little late against Anariba Marco Anariba number 17 and Ariba takes the ball from him. Catliff has a little go afterwards. <laughs> Saying, you can't do that to me. You've already had enough of the ball this evening. Referee gives the free kick to Honduras. And to touch off the Honduran player, and it will be a throw-in for Canada. There's that black eye, the left eye of John Catliff. We saw Catliff, oh, about a week and a half ago in Hamilton, Graham. He didn't have that black eye then, so I'm assuming that indeed he suffered it against Nova Scotia last Sunday. And this time, the battle between Anoriba and Catliff goes to Catliff. Let's see if Ian Bridge comes up at the far post get this Canadian side back in the game. Jamie Lowry gets away from Zapata and lays it back. Miller Ooh. through the middle for Bridge. Does well to get there. Limniatis will come deep on the left. Lowry nods it down and back for Carl Valentine as the Canadians Looking good at setting up here, although the Hondurans may be laying back just a little bit. 
The Hondurans quite content to let Canada play across the box as long as they don't get in behind them. They've been allowing Canada to play that ball square, play it back, but they've not been allowing them to play it diagonally in behind the back four. Zapata. For Bennett. Juan Espinosa. Laid the ball square through the middle. Valentine nearly got there. Yeah. Martinez will go wide to the left. Eduardo Dolmo. And Arriba couldn't get away. And this is Gilberto Yearwood for Martinez. And he'll give it away. We played 15 and a half minutes of this second half, and it's 4 0 Honduras. The ball through for Dale Mitchell doesn't get there. Luis Calix. Oh, here's Eduardo Bennett. Here's another chance, and again, Marini may be a little guilty of not knowing what to do. Caught in no man's land. Well, I think he did the right thing there because I'm sure he called to Ian Bridge, leave it. But Ian Bridge in two minds whether to knock it back. Watch this is an awkward ball. Watch Bridge. Should he play it? Should he leave it? The youngster said, leave it the right decision because Dolmo was sneaking up on Marini's right the angle was wrong so the angle of the ball was wrong Bennett should really have cut in and had to go with that left foot of his we've already seen him use it a couple of times very effectively getting ready to come into the game for Honduras is Camilo Bonilla Espinosa leaves it for Luis Calix. Martinez and back to Wilmer Cruz. Quickly ahead for Gilberto Yearwood and they'll come wide right now for Antonio Zapata. Martinez. Espinosa. Eduardo Dolmo. Through the middle. Oh, Ian Bridge is there. And then finally ricochets to Frank Yallop, and they'll play it back for 18 year old Carlo Marini. The unexpected chance to play in this Gold Cup after Craig Forrest was ejected. Oh, lovely give and go. Now it's Yearwood. He's got Dolmo breaking in around Bridge. Dolmo will get it across. Still kept in play. Honduras leading by four. Looking for five. Bennett plays it back for Espinosa. Now they'll come back to midfield for Antonio Zapata. Martinez through the middle. Shielded well by Dolmo. Luis Calix. Espinosa goes to the far post. Kept in play. No, it went over the end line, says the referee. A substitution coming up. We'll take a break. It's 4-0, Honduras leading Canada in Los Angeles. 
McNeil is, is world-class tennis is coming to Canada August 3rd to 11th the world's best will go head-to-head -head at the players limited challenge names like Graf, Capriati, Sabatini, Kelsey, and Novotna will compete for a share of six hundred twenty five thousand dollars the 1991 players limited challenge tennis championships August 3rd to 11th at the National Tennis Center if you'll be in the Toronto area tickets are available at Tennis Canada 416-665-9777 or by calling Ticketmaster at 416-872-5000 Camilo Bonilla coming into the game for Juan Espinosa and the Honduran side as we play 20 minutes now of this second half and the entry of Bonilla certainly isn't going to hurt this Honduras side Camilo Bonilla an excellent player we had a little pre-match publicity about who to look for in this game, and Bonilla was one of the superstars. For some reason or other, he didn't start. Luis Calix. Eduardo Bennett. John Limniatus. And it's so difficult for Canada now because the two front runners have got four white chips against them. The men at the back are getting plenty of the ball, but it's almost impossible to find Catliff and Dale Mitchell. Colin Miller to take this throw in. Comes back. Valentine looking for Catliff. Left foot still there. Yes! Dale Mitchell and Canada is on the board. And the first time in a long, long time that Canada has got behind the back four of this Honduran side. Good play to set up Catliff. He really didn't want the ball from Valentine there, but he got to it first. Hit it strongly. Good save by Cruz, but Dale Mitchell follows up to put it in the back of the net. Great ball by Carol Valentine. John Catliff, as I said, didn't want it originally, but managed to get to it first. Hits it well. And the old veteran Dale Mitchell knocks it into the back of the net for at least a consolation goal. Good work by Catliff, strong left foot. Goalkeeper who's looked so casual all night, makes a boo-boo there and puts it right in the path of Dale Mitchell. Dale Mitchell's goal coming at 68 minutes and it's now four to one. I thought it was really nicely set up, a nice give and go, worked well and then finally cut in front. It was a great give and go provided you count Cruz in because he was the one who gave it. <laughs> That's right. Thank you very much, Mr. Cruz. So Canada trailing now four to one. But that's an important goal. This is a round robin. Canada still has to play Mexico and Jamaica. Little bit of confidence. They're playing with 10 men. Get another one, get another two. They could well come out of this tournament with a great deal of credibility. Well, the other thing is, too, if it comes down to who goes into the semifinals and goal a difference goal. means something, you'll want to get every goal you can. Valentine looking for Bridge and headed away. Having said that, I can't see this Honduran side scoring four goals against Mexico, quite no. frankly. Valentine again looking for Bridge over his head this time. But, you know, we've seen it so often Graham, if the Hondurans may be guilty of anything, is laying back. And then suddenly when you're under pressure, you want to turn it on again. That's not as easy to do as you might think. Here's an opportunity now for Bonilla. Bonilla dances to the right. Miller is back, lays it off for Calix. And cleared away by Frankie Yellow. Valentine will slow it down. Yallop. 
you can see him looking for someone and every red shirt he looks at is being picked up by at least one white shirt and it should be easy for the Hondurans as Canada playing with just 10 men what it's going to take is a little bit of individuality that we saw from Carl Valentine where he goes past three men that that cancels out the extra man but playing at the feet like this is so tough you've got to get the ball and run at people 50 50 balls played through is is so awkward when you're two front runners against four back men and Arriba makes the run for Honduras now waits and looks and finds Calix Antonio Zapata cross headed away by Ian Bridge Zapata again Colin Miller there to defend for Canada Zapata tries to get it across it'll go over the end line off of Villa it'll be a Honduran corner just give it away as they played it back for Zapata and now it's Catliff Zapata at midfield comes back for Funes and Arriba through the middle for Bonilla and it'll skip through and over the end line Eduardo Bennett looking for the corner and, and in fact that's it. what they've gotten Very optimistic, but if you're 4-0 up, well worth the try. <laughs> what I thought he was going to do from that corner was draw the Canadians out and then chip one for a late runner, but he decided to try the shot, and it really wasn't much of an effort. Ian Bridge will come across through the middle for Mark Watson. Colin Miller to midfield for Canada. They trail 4-1. And we played 28 minutes of this second half. Miller trying to bust his way through and draws the foul. Chance here to see the Dale Mitchell players are too far out. No, he can bend one from here. Just depends. It may be more of an advantage because the line will be a little further back. And they won't have so many people in the line, I wouldn't think. Dale Mitchell wearing number nine. Frankie Yallop is there wearing number two as Wilmer Cruz sets himself. It'll be Yallop this time, drives it off the Honduran wall. That was different. Not a good free kick at all. They have Mitchell alone, wide left. Lays it right back for Limni Addis, who tries to break through. And is he going to get the foul? Yes, he is. But he won't get anything else. As Antonio foul, Zapata, sorry, Graham, was guilty of blocking his path. Cut through for Valentine Good and head over the end line. The corner for Canada. Ramon Castro. Dale Mitchell, who has the only goal for Canada, jockeying with Castro to the far post, and no challenge at all to Wilmer Cruz. And no danger at all for Wilmer Cruz. Good hands, his timing is excellent. He, he makes it look so easy. Eduardo Dolmo. 
Will cut across the top of the area looking for Bonilla making the run and it just didn't get through as Frank Yellup did a nice job to pick up his man making the break. Ian Bridge lays it back and they'll come back now to Carlo Marini. Boy, I tell you what, if you are guilty of ball watching here, they'll just run right by you. They made some very, very good runs. Bonilla made a great one there for Dolmo, and luckily Yellup cut it off. Colin Miller. Slows it down and has a good look as Bonilla is up to pressure him. Now Ian Bridge will come wide left. Looking for Valentine standing there, and it was read very well by Raul Martinez. Zapata. Through ball wide right. Bonilla. Lowry marking him as they go for Martinez. Not close. There you see the time. We played just over a half hour of this second half for one Honduras. Carl Valentine, Colin Miller, the Honduran head coach, Flavio Ortega. Oh, Valentine gives it away. Offside. Well, the offside run by Eduardo Bennett. He was unlucky. He laid it wide, then made a beautiful run through the middle, but he outpaced the Canadian defenders and was in an offside position. Watch him go through the middle. Ball is cut through, but there you can see clearly that he was offside. He's given young Mark Watson quite a handful this evening as number 19, Eduardo Bennett. Cuidado, cuidado. Lemney Addis. Oh, a little dummy played by Catliff. But the Honduran didn't bite as they were trying to find Dale Mitchell. He's looked sharp, especially early when Canada had a couple of opportunities in the first 10 minutes. Wilmer Cruz, the keeper for Honduras. Eduardo Bennett. They'll lay it back. This is Dolmo dancing around. Dolmo, oh, Marini is there this time. As it was Anariba who had made the run down the left wing. Limniatis. Well, I'm sure that Mark Watson clears this ball just in time, but on the replay, it was obvious that he never got close, and Carlo Marina had to come out and grab it at the near post. I thought when I saw the original player that Mark Watson had cleared it off Dolmo, straight into the hands of Marino, Marini, but Carlo made a good save. with the throw in back to his keeper Cruz and the keeper returns the favor back to Anna Riba and then downfield Dolmo takes control Luis Calix who has one of the goals for Honduras comes wide right for Zapata Martinez And Arriba, Yearwood, Calix, Funes, Martinez, Zapata, and now the Hondurans playing the run and catch kind of game, and the Canadians finally do catch up with it, and this is Carl Valentine. Limniatis at midfield. 
Valentine, Catliff, Lowry makes a run across the top of the box. Catliff does well to get away from the mark of Bonilla, but this time Bonilla is caught. And the referee, Mr. Angeles, saying take it outside the area. Limniatis cuts it through looking for Mitchell and it's headed out of play by Ramon Costro. Colin Miller has moved up to take the throw in for Canada. Looking for Mitchell and the ball will go off of Castro and it'll be a corner for Canada. Approximately 10 minutes remaining and it is 4-1 Honduras. Valentine near post still there, yes! Canada gets another one and it is Dale Mitchell. He took the knock for it, but I'm sure he'll trade the knock for the second goal. Nice little flick on from the near post. And now it's four to two. Good corner kick shipped into the near post. Watch the little flick on as Valentine knocks it. Catlip flicks it back. In goes Mitchell and Bridge. It's Mitchell that gets the last touch and it's four to two. Valentine curves it to the near post. John Catliff with a little flick on. And Dale Mitchell gets the final touch. That's a corner kick that Tony Waiters and the club have practiced and practiced. And when it comes off, that little curver to Catliff, little flick on, and Dale Mitchell is the one who's supposed to put it in. It all worked perfectly. Ten out of ten, it's now four to two. And I tell you what, Graham, full credit to the Canadians because they're doing this with 10 men. As it looks as we have another substitution now, Luis Calix is coming out of the game and coming in will be Arnold Javier Cruz for Honduras. It's four to two, Honduras leading. We'll return to Los Angeles and the Gold Cup in just a minute. Coca-Cola wants to take you out to the ballpark. We've got instant win ticket packages to the Major League Baseball All-Star Game at Skydome July 9th. And tickets to regular season Blue Jay games. You could also win caps, jerseys, and jackets, as well as bonus bottles of Coca-Cola Classic. To enter the Coca-Cola Classic Baseball Caps Contest, buy a 500 or 750 milliliter bottle of any Coca-Cola product and check under the cap. You could be a winner with Coca-Cola Classic. Details at participating stores. Honduras led 4-0 early in the second half, but two straight goals by Dale Mitchell has brought Canada halfway back with still slightly under 10 minutes to play. From the Los Angeles Coliseum, this is the Gold Cup on TSN. Vic Roder along with Graham Leggett. It's interesting that the Hondurans, Graham, have made two substitutions, their limit. The Canadians haven't made, well, they've made one, of course. They had to make the substitution to bring Carlo Marini in, but Tony Waiters hasn't gone for maybe some late speed yet. I'm not sure he's got all that much late speed sitting on the bench, to tell you the truth. It's very awkward for a player to come in now and try and get the pace of this game. Oh, Catliff left a foot in late, and I think he'll get the warning from the referee, Mr. Angeles, and oh, he's going to get a yellow card. A little bit of frustration on the part of John Catliff. He's had a battle all night, these two, and well, from here it looked as if he went for the ball. He didn't leave his foot in. He, he challenged for the ball as it was being kicked. 
very obvious to see if you leave your foot in, but he went for the ball. Referee Arturo Angles decided it was illegal, and it's a free kick. Been quite the battle going on between Catliff and Zapata. Catliff near sideline. Lowry makes the run on the left. And Martinez will clear it into touch. Throw in for Canada. Colin Miller. And we will have a substitution now. Coming into the game, Nick Gilbert. And he'll take the place of Jamie Lowry. Gilbert, the 26-year-old. Gilbert who is the property of the Hamilton Steelers, however, has not come to a contract agreement with them this season. A former CSL MVP in 1987 with the Calgary Kickers makes his first touch and lays it right back. Carl Valentine. Miller. Oh, through. Oh, my. He waited. He tried to get his left foot. He hoped it would tee up for Catliff, and he waited too long, Graham. I'm not sure if he waited too long or if the white shirts just converged on him too quickly. Good covering by Honduras. He sure seemed to have the space. These spaces disappear awfully quickly. <laughs> Still in play. Punched away by Cruz. Oh. Foul against Nick Gilbert for going up with his hand as Vilma Cruz tried to punch the ball away. Nick Gilbert with three international caps for Canada. He has scored 35 goals in his Canadian Soccer League career. Well, I must say that combination of Patliff and Gilbert won the CSL first ever championship for Calgary. They were dynamite. Of course, ever since then, Catliff has been dynamite for the 86ers. Eduardo Dolmo having a few words with Mr. Angeles as the Canadians put it back into play. Skipping it through. Here's a not to the chance. Mitchell, maybe a one-time volley. Dale trying to hook it back. Surrounded. Still in play. Mitchell, what a great job. And finally cleared away by Castro. And then into touch, but lovely control shown by the veteran Dale Mitchell. Pretty tough to squeeze it through white shirts there, but Dale Mitchell very nearly did. And now referee Arturo Angeles is having a word with Dale.